Whitey Herzog, the most popular manager across the state of Missouri because he managed both teams successfully, won a World Series with the Cardinals, went to the World Series three times, won one, took the Royals to the postseason the first three times in the franchise history. And he is here tonight. And right before we went on the air, you were reminding us about uh, the year that you had Rex Hudler with the Cardinals. Oh, Rex and I had some laughs. You know, the, fans, <laughs> the fans always loved Rex because he hustle, hustle, hustle. And, you know, if there was a boo boo at first or he beat the play because he could run, he'd take off for second. And if there was another boo boo, he'd take off for third. But eventually he'd run himself out. You know, so one day I was talking to Rex and I said, Rex, I really don't make any difference to me where you make out first, second, or third. What the heck's the use to keep going? You're going to be out anyway before you get done. <laughs> but we had some laughs. I remember that. he told me, hey, you know, you can stop at a base once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> we, we had some laughs. I want to tell you. But he was a fun guy to have in your ball club. And uh, the fans love Rex mm -hmm. I mean, in Montreal, in St. Louis, in Anaheim, anywhere he's ever been. Thanks, Whitey. Yeah, this uh, this must be a lot of fun for you to watch these two teams playing as well as they are. Well, you know, Rex, when uh, they started interleague play, I didn't agree that they should do that. I think there's enough travel in baseball. I don't really see any need for it. I don't think the White Sox or Cubs need it. I don't think the New York clubs need it. But at that time, Kansas City being a doormat and down. It was nice that they got to play six games or three games here every year with the Cardinals because they packed the house. You know. But now you got two teams that are good, and it's a little tougher for the Cardinals to come and play them here or play them in St. Louis because, you know, these two teams could meet the World Series. If, if things broke right, you can't say nothing's for sure today because of the wild card, the knockout game, winning your division. You know, it's uh, you used to have to win your division to get in the playoffs. You know, you got Miami wins two times, uh, finished second. I mean, finished 13 games out, nine games out. Mm -hmm. Cardinals last two World Championship, five and a half games out, nine games out, and they win the World Championship. I'm not against the fact that more teams get in the playoffs and so forth, but. Once again, when I look at the, you got to add the other wild card team now, the knockout game. That's a joke. It's tough. One you, game. You know, you got one game, you play all year, 162 games, and you got one game that you don't know. Just take, look at the Royals last year. They get down 6 2 to Oakland Moss, hit the three run homer. They got their best pitcher going, Lester. He's got 94 pitches, and he's winning 6 to 3. Uh, and he walks a guy on a 3-2 pitch with two outs that could have been strike three. And he was ball four, and they take him out. Now, here's a guy they traded half the franchise for. He's only got 94 pitches, two outs and two men on. They bring in a guy from the bullpen, gives up three hits, ties the game. The Royals win 11, and from that on, it turned the city around. It turned the baseball team around, the players around, and it's still something that's happened. And I said, I, I don't understand that I'm not second guess of Melbourne because he's done a good job. Why would you give that much to get a pitcher? And why would he have 94 pitches and two outs of a six inning with his first three lead? Mm -hmm. And you take him out. I got to give him another hitter. At least a hitter. Now, if, you know, I mean, I can't take him out in that situation. I think he stared at the ceiling a few uh, times during the offseason right. and thought about that. Huh? I think he stared at the ceiling during the offseason a few times and thought about that move. Well, you know, <laughs> you know, then you can look back. I love Yossi. I had a good conversation with him tonight. You know, that first that knockout game, he brings in the kid to pitch out of a jam. He should have brought in Herrera to pitch out of the jam and let then let Vargas pitch the next inning and then go to Davis and the other guy. I, but it worked out. I read your book. And I loved it. You're missing a great game. Right. And I, I used a line that you had in that book. What would help you sleep at night is that when you were deciding who was going to pinch hit or who you're going to bring out of the bullpen, the guy with more zeros in his salary yeah. was the one you were going to defer to because yeah. there's a reason why they're making that money. That's right. I, I learned that against Rusty Staub in the camp in Detroit when I first managed an American League for the Royals. And I had a situation in Detroit where Kemp was having a great rookie year, the kid from Southern Cal. Mm -hmm. 
left hand hitter and he was hitting behind stop. And uh, no, he was hitting in front of stop. He was hitting third. The rest of the stop was hitting fourth. And I walked Kemp to get the stop. And you know, it's, Steve Kemp. Uh, you know, I, mean, I had to set up first play, but in the meantime, no, I could have. I, sh I shouldn't. Have, I wouldn't have had to do that. But anyway, to make a little pretty sure, Rusty could hit, and he blew one in. You know, down in the house. I said that from that time on. There's a reason he's making three million and Kemp's making a rookie. So. <laughs> right, right. And that was always something I, I looked at and something that I felt that I could sleep with. Mm -hmm. We just a few moments ago had a shot of all the or some of the championship banners up on the, the Royals Hall of Fame. And you were manager in 1976 and then 1977, the team that won 102 games, 1978. You know, that's when it all started when you were manager and the team went from an expansion team to a to a model franchise in the American League. Well, you know, basically I got fired in Texas. I got Ted Williams took me into taking that job. It was probably the dumbest thing I ever did in my life. I got fired in September 8th that first year and uh, my record was 47 91. I didn't think I'd ever get another chance to manage being a no name player or just a hanger on. And I went out and coached for Winkles out of, at, uh, in L.A., in Anaheim. But Joe Burke, who was my general manager of Texas, came to Kansas City. And uh, when he thought he had to make a change, he interviewed Losarda and Billy Hunter and myself. And he chose me to take over the job in the middle of June. And I stepped into a wonderful situation. Brett was a rookie. Now Mayberry was hitting the 39 home runs. I had two great players on the bench, and Frank White and Al Collins. I had McRae, I had Otis, I had Freddie Potek, a wonderful turf shortstop. He could play shortstop on that turf. And you know, when I put Brett Collins in the lineup and took uh, uh, Cookie Rojas and made a pencil out, it was like getting two superstars and not giving up nothing. Right. And we just took one. And if you never forget in 77, we started off 36 and 36 and uh, half a game out on August 30th and uh, Gene Mock was managing Minnesota. He said, nobody's good enough to pull away. I'll never forget that. But I put that up in the bulletin board so the players would see that. We won 16 in a row, beat Oakland a doubleheader right here at 3.30 in the morning. And seven people drowned in the flash floods leaving the ballpark that night. Doc Bennett's come in the next night and threw a one nothing shutout to break our 16 game losing streak. And then we won eight more. We won 24 out of 25. Bulletin and board. And ended up winning 102 games. Bulletin board material worked. Well, you know, in everything, I, that, that every move you make, things, when things are going good, everything goes well. <laughs> right. You know, you know, every pitcher you strapped out there did a job. And, you know, the big thing in managing is the bullpen. Mm -hmm. And I told, uh, I told uh, Yossi tonight, I said, you got one of the greatest bullpens in the history of the game. Now you got two more guys that are doing the job. And I said, it's almost like you better get beat by five or you ain't going to beat them. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, I never seen a team that could lose a starter for 30 days and then put a guy out there and don't give up a run. <laughs> we love you, Rod. We love you, buddy. Thanks for coming. <laughs>